Welcome to the world's first Black Nerd Empowerment Podcast, The Swarthy Nerd, with your boy, the TV Guru 108. And you can just know, man. And we're back for another week to talk to you guys and gals. Um, well, shit, we really don't have much to talk about. Yeah. Um, shit, it was actually a slow week for me Both personally. I've been more just working, coming home, watching the ride die, um, and then going back to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've just been uh, standing Saying I guess we've been working on a whole bunch of projects and building stuff up to, so I can do my own shit. Yeah. It. So, Damn here. Yeah. Jesus. Um, I guess you can go first. All right. So the first thing I've been up to is Superman, the man of tomorrow. Oh, yes. Uh, I guess we can say this is an animated DC animated movie. Animated DC movie that just came out last Monday. No, last Sunday. Last Sunday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Shit, what it's about? So it's about another take on the Superman origins, but they cut it short, and you get straight to the actions. You know, you see Superman as an intern for the Daily the Daily Globe. Yeah, you got started with him as a kid first. Oh, as a kid. Yeah. <coughs> oh yeah. That, that, oh yeah. Kind of love the scene. Okay, it's like him hanging out with his friend. Yeah. And they watch an Alien movie. Mm-hmm. You used to get the bunch of shit. Yeah. Which also, I guess, like, it is the theme of the uh, movie. It's yeah, like it's aliens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how people react to aliens. So we see Superman go. crying like a bitch as a little kid. Why? He wasn't being a bitch. <laughs> he, was, he was breaking down crying like that, a mo. That hurt his feelings. <laughs> He like how, how you go, how you be Superman but something like that hurts your feelings you fucking well, bitch. Well, he didn't know what he was. He <laughs> know who he was. He was like, if anything, you can take it as like a, like a homosexual type thing. He didn't know what was inside of yeah. him. <laughs> and he know he was something. His different. uncle's uh, fingers he, up his butthole that was inside him. He always knew he was different. So, <laughs> like, like, you can sort of take it like that yeah. for real as like being homosexual or. No, anything else? No, no knowing like not knowing who you are as a person because you were adopted. You don't know who your background your background is. Like, who was your blood family? Where they came from? Type mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. There you go. So I do like I do appreciate you know that little narrative theme of mm-hmm. finding out who you are and what makes you as a person. That's that, that's actually one of the uh, major themes of the story. It's like yes. what make you as a person. Yes, and that's what's so funny about it is like. And the person who delivers the information is not his dad from a goddamn ice palace. It's a fucking badass nigga on a bike Hike. named Lobo. Lobo. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest troll in this movie. <laughs> he is a fucking love. I want, I want to start reading Lobo comics. Oh, if, the Lobo shit. If this is how Lobo is as a character. He's trolling. He's oh, fucking yeah. around with people. Oh, cracking yeah. jokes. I want to be his books. I feel like that some guy would oh, enjoy I gotta reading. Some, I got to show you some videos then. I got, I got like two videos of Lobo they break down. Oh man. Like his origin is fucking nuts. Yeah, like I know. Kind of, I was looking up like I know like he came from a like, really peaceful planet that just got the freedom mm. and they were like 5,000 years advanced from the rest of humanity mm-hmm. and Lobo just destroyed it by just killing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> The fuck I'm born and kill all this planet because <laughs> be reckless. Uh, <laughs> he hops with his motorcycle and drives away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, then he grows up. Um he's not even working for the Daily Planet. He's like an intern yeah. uh, for the yeah. Daily Planet. Like an intern. I wouldn't expect him to Coffee show boy. like Star Industries and all that. I'm like, oh shit, Star Industries, damn. Yeah, I didn't expect let's look let's look at this movie either. I thought uh, it could be him. I thought honestly it was be him fighting Lobo, like Lobo's evading Earth. Yeah, but I mean, like the movie actually does like a couple spins on you because first you think you he gonna be fighting Lobo, but then it's not Lobo. Then you think he gonna fight Master Manhunter, but it's not Master Manhunter. Manhunter. Then it turns out to be this little alien thing that happened in the, at, at the beginning of the movie with uh, fighting Lobo. You're like, yeah. God damn, that's the villain. Parasite he turns out to be a fucking a beast for real. He yeah. fucking. Um, like dude. This, this janitor dude, when Lobo and Superman was fighting, they crashed into Star Industries and um, knocked some fucking purple ooze out. And the purple ooze went all over this janitor dude. And he uh, turned into like this place they say energy vampire. He can steal anyone's energy. Like, and he's he craves more and more and more. It actually was pretty pretty interesting. Like, this was not a bad movie. It was like, not. It was, real. A, like, it was a fun I, watch. I, I got to give it a. Um, I gotta give it an A. Me too. It's an A. I gotta give it an A. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it wasn't not a bad movie. It was no boring parts. And what made it so great because Lobo and stole then, the show. And then out of nowhere, they have Martian Manhunt. I love Martian Manhunt. That's one like one of my favorite characters. Uh, I'm like shit. That was cool. I like I like that shit. And then they even they do a low key like drop to uh, Batman. 
because the mom, like when she designed Superman's uh, costume, it's like, yeah, it reminds me of that um, the, that man in um, Gotham, uh, Batman. That's what made me want to design to design your suit like this type mm-hmm. stuff. I'm like, oh, that's tight. Hey, I mean, like they got to do a sequel. Shit, yeah. they got to. Like, I want to see this story on another, like, like another. Evolve. Yeah, I want another. See, I want to see something else. The best part in the movie was um, when Lobo got captured and Louis Lane trying to interview Lobo. Oh yeah, Lobo. <laughs> It's not even flirt with her. He's just being sexual as fuck. Like, uh-huh. He's like, yeah, I want you to put this in the story. You saw me. You got super horny. It was the heat. <laughs> and you, you wanted my dick. And it cuts to Louis Lane, covering her ears, turning Lobo, shut the fuck up, you creep. <laughs> and Lobo just keep going on. So he started doing like some weird dancing shit. Uh-huh. And Lobo's like, what are you doing? What the hell are you? It's like, uh-huh. baby, baby, that's not even a quarter of my um, mate to dance for you. <laughs> And she just stole her little notepad against Lobo's uh, cell, containing cell, and she storms off mm-hmm. <laughs> piss. Mm-hmm. And then he tried to get closer to the uh, the thing. Come on, baby. He you know like, he wants me. And then he, <laughs> 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 uh, so he like drained from the fucking uh, electricity getting him. He, he said some creepy shit. I can't even remember. But that shit was funny as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, um, the animation was really good. Like um, I noticed, like how the, how the hand movements and arm movements are. Yes, yeah, super that was, fluid. That was really, really freaking good. I really liked that. That was dope. Um, also, like, um, yeah, I, I just wasn't expecting the thing to be draining motherfuckers like that. Like, damn, he still ate powers too. Yeah. Somebody just drain them. And their memories. Oh yeah, the memories too. Like Jesus, and that actually helped them learn about their origins, mm-hmm. <laughs> and also Lobo because Lobo knew who instantly who, who what uh, Superman was and a Martian Manhunter. It was like, yeah. Uh, oh no, that's you nothing. Guys are- uh, in an interview, uh, she asked him about Superman. Like, yeah, he's a he's a Kryptonian. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's la- he's not he's not the last of his race. His millions of them yeah, yeah. coming to the planet, and, and they will liquefy, liquefy yeah, anyone. <laughs> Lois Lane got our jaw like. <gasps> Like, look at your face, it's priceless. <laughs> <laughs> like, this fucking intergalactic troll, nigga. He is intergalactic. Right, it's an intergalactic troll, nigga. Straight up. That's fucking crazy. Like, Lobo the shit. Actually, that's the name of the episode we're going to do. Inter- Lobo. Intergalactic trolls. <laughs> <laughs> intergalactic. <laughs> real, because Lobo the shit. Um, but uh, it ain't pretty much else to really talk about it. Yeah. Um, let, I, oh, you know, because that's what's so great about it. Like, so they about to face it, they dude off, and they got Superman, Martian Manhunter, and um, Lobo, and Lex Luthor. I'm like, what the hell Lex Luthor going to do, mm-hmm. nigga? He ain't even got his, like, super suit on or nothing. That nigga just there. Just have a shotgun. <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. Like, like, okay, nigga, you going to be um, cannon fodder, nigga. Because <laughs> you going to die first. But uh, the final battle is pretty good. Um, dang. Is it a spoiler to say he killed these niggas? <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, because, yeah. I mean, it's a spoiler to say that Lobo blew himself up to try to save mm-hmm. Earth. Yeah. And got everybody, you know, sad that he died, but he was like, nah, I actually, I am, am immortal. I can't <laughs> die. I like, I like to keep people guessing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that goes back to the uh, joke. Okay, so um, the bike go to the power plant to fight Parasite. Mm-hmm. And Superman asked him how he was able to get everybody out of the uh, power plant. Mm-hmm. And Lobo's like, yeah, I caught it a ball threat. <laughs> and Lobo's like, like, what? He's like, don't play like that. Like, I'm not playing. You can say, see him with a, ding, ding, like, like a uh, Islamic, <laughs> Islamic mistake right. uh, by, by a fist. <laughs> but blowing himself up. Uh, He's like, I'm not playing. <laughs> I, I, should, I should have a bomb. <laughs> yeah, Lobo, yeah, he stole that whole movie, man. Like that, and that, that's who introduces uh, Superman to his origins. Like, that's that was smart, man. Like, I was just, I'm just pissed, like, God damn, how the fuck y'all can do this but not in live action? Yeah, like, like this would make a great live action TV series. Like, perfect. Like, see how perfect. everybody, like, get the origins, like, right. where they in came one from. Epi- in one movie, you can get everybody three characters' origins. Come on. And you can actually start off a little bit earlier with, like, you can start off with Lobo, like, him in space. Because um, we still don't know why he came to Earth. He saves hunting. Kyle Albert, he mean. Man, this is Lobo. He could be good sports. He just want to have just, fun. Just having fun. Fuck it. <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, that was a really good movie, girl. Um, right. A for me. A for me. What you got next? All right. Um, at the near the end game for Final Fantasy 3 DS. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I just got the Earth Crystal, the Earth Fang. Okay. Yeah, so the Earth Fang is pretty much... Okay, so in the second half of the game, you supposed to collect these fangs so you can cut through these mountains to get to this land called Forbidden Land Eureka, where you... And connected, and connected to the, uh, the land is this alternate universe called the Dark World. So the main bad guy of the game, Zane, he froze time because when he was young, his master, Nora, died. Mm-hmm. So Nora gave Zane and his uh, two homeboys some gifts. So this old man named uh, Dora, he gives him the gift of knowledge. Mm-hmm. He gives this old lady the gift of uh, dreams. And he gives um, Zane the gift of uh, morality because they were all immortal. Mm-hmm. So Zane was, he was used not, to not dying and not used to you know, seeing death. But when he got the gift of uh, life, he just snapped. And it got worse when he saw his master die in front of his uh, eyes. Mm-hmm. So after he saw his master die, he flooded the earth and froze time. Before the flood, you find out that um, this group of people called the Ancient, they created this giant continent and kind of like, um, you know, the castle, you know, the castle of the sky, sky yeah, castle of the sky, how it's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, float, it's a floating continent in the sky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they took that idea and like turned it into like an actual nation where the survivors of the uh, flood go on top of the um, continent. Mm-hmm. So you find out that he did that because he did not give a fuck about life. He wanted to live forever. So what he did was um, build these four statues that if you pass the statues, you'll get zapped to death. So these fangs pretty much destroy the statues. So you, you, you go past the statue and you go to uh, the for, yeah, for being like Eureka, where you had to collect all these um, weapons, a classic, because uh, Final Fantasy III is super infamous for having one of the worst, hardest bosses in the game. So the final boss of the game is Dark Cloud. Mm-hmm. And somebody on YouTube made a good comment about her. Dark Cloud? Yeah. Like Cloud from Final Fantasy VII? Yeah, but it's, 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 a, it's a chick. Let me show you a picture of her. Okay. Look her up right like, now. Cloud, like Cloud Strife? Yeah, like her name is, like her name is, is Cloud. Okay. Dark Cloud. Okay. Final Fantasy three. Yeah, let me show you a picture of her. Um, she got like a couple of different forms. Like this is her uh, final, final boss form. Oh, shit. And this is her... Uh, her when she's like in her final boss form. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, like a half naked woman. Mm. So she's like one of the most infamous bosses in the series because, um, you know how Final Fantasy, you have these um, bosses, like super bosses, where you, you know how to fight them to beat the game? Because bosses where you can beat them, you can like a super power up. Mm-hmm. So they took that castle with her as a super boss, but made her as a final boss. Mm-hmm. So pretty much Eureka has all these weaponries where it can hurt her badly. Mm-hmm. But if you skip, if you skip uh, Yurika and skip a part in the uh, Dark World where you got to say these four warriors of darkness, mm. she's pretty much immortal. Mm-hmm. You can't beat her without the reference, but like, it's going to take you hours. And she's pretty much going to kill you like one, two hits. Mm. So I'm pretty much at that point in the game, I just got to um, get the key to Yurika. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully by the time we record next week, I'll tell you guys the end of the game and shit. Mm-hmm. All right. Oops, I am fucked up. All right, this thing I'm playing is on Fire Emblem again. Okay. Not three houses. I gave up three houses. I'm soft like, like a motherfucker in the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually playing this one I'm had called Super 3 so 76. Okay. All right, so Super 3, Super 3, yeah, Super 3 so is a ROM hack of the hardest Fire Emblem game called three, six, yeah, 3 so 76. So this guy named Lennon, the Chinese guy who made the game Ron Hack, the very first thing you like, very, the very first bullshit you see in the game that Ron Hack is uh, a crow for him saying, "I did, I did not play test, this, yeah, I did not play test this game. I did not know how hard this game is. Do not blame me for anything that will bring uh, bring you distress." Mm-hmm. So he pretty much made the game harder and put a whole bunch of bullshit in the game to make you pretty much not even want to play the Ron Hack. So. In the first in the first map, you um, it's still the same. You no, know, you gotta fight these guys uh, who kidnapped Lee's girlfriend Nana and her his friend uh, Marita. 
is a this is a, this is a dude named Arden, who you think you, like um you think you could beat him because his stats was kind of low. So as soon as you try to go in combat with him, his flash, like his stats inflates. You said Super Thracia. Yeah, Super Thracia. Seven, seven, six. Yep. So we you fight him. As soon as you get done fighting him, his stats go up to max, and he has like he he can move like three turns, like he can do like three three moves in one turn. And if you didn't know that beforehand, beforehand, he were just fucking slide your whole team, and you gotta start the whole game over. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no bullshit part of the game where um so this guy who made the game he changed the whole map. So you're supposed to go so in the game uh, one part of the game you're supposed to go to this um castle, and the leader of the castle is forcing all his um his um units to fight to the death. So that was already hard enough as it is on the, on the original game. This time around, the guy who made the Marpack turned into the uh, turned into a maze, and it's complete darkness. You're going to see your uh, units. You cannot see in the bad guys. So you want to so you uh, walk around the darkness trying to figure out where what is the right path. And you take the wrong path. This is actually a part where um you get ambushed by a bunch of little kids. Now this is like this is part where we get fucked up. Mm. So these kids. Got turned to zombies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of like they are actually they are actually like zombies in uh, Fire Emblem Five. Okay. Like, depending on who you didn't recruit, they they would die in the story and come back in the uh, final stage of the game as zombies. Mm. But this sick fuck decided to make little kids as zombies and you got killed the little kids. Mm. Like you cannot, even, you can't even catch them. Like usually, uh, when you was um say the kids was to catch them, but uh, this time around, you have to kill little kids in this game. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's a fun, it's a fun fire hack. It's really hard as fuck. Okay. And some questionable content in the game. Questionable. Yeah. <laughs> no, like gone. Uh, no, like this whole part in the game. Where, um, apparently, there's a fraction that's named after a uh, Nazi think tank. Mm-hmm. And they kind of justify you to killing these kids because they say, okay, these kids are part of, part of the Nazis. You got to kill them. Mm-hmm. And somebody uh, who knows everybody saying that, um, that that's, that's not true. You guys got tricked into killing kids and you guys, and your guys are actually the bad guys. And the good guys from past fire games are coming after you to get you because you're actually going around fucking the country up. Because mm-hmm. you, you got tricked into um, killing innocent people who thought you, who thought they were the bad guys. Mm-hmm. So, phone little rhyme hack. I hope um, it gets a translation. Somebody made a English patch for the means of English, but the story is not uh, in English. So, the person behind the English patch translation of the rhyme hack is making it into um, trying to translate the actual story. So, mm-hmm. hopefully, we, we get understand why this is going on because this game, is fuck, this rhyme hack is fucking goofy as fuck. Mm-hmm. Next thing is, I, is that I finished the, volume, the first volume of um, Winter Girlfriend. Okay. So it pretty much, the, the, so the first volume, honestly, it pretty much followed the first two or three episodes of Winter Girlfriend. And like I said last week, honestly, this, the manga, the, the OG manga is a fucking slog to read through. So, you know, the scene in the anime where um, Kashi or Homeboys get introduced to um, the Winter Girlfriend? Mm-hmm. And you know, they're just talking, you know, game because mock him. That's a good anime too. Yeah, man. I love watching that shit. It's fucking. And hilarious. okay, so they go in they cut through. They they go to the restaurant scene. Mm-hmm. So there's a scene in the manga that is in the anime where they just talking all shit about him being a virgin. Mm-hmm. You know, just cracking jokes like, yeah, he can't get any pussy. He's he's so awkward around females and shit. Mm-hmm. Nigga, yeah, virgins too. Ain't yeah, they? yeah, the worst too. What the hell? But they keep going on with the joke for like two or three pages. Mm. When it should have just been like two or three panels at most. So now the anime. Yeah, so yeah, so it's like the manga just kind of whole lot of unnecessary padding that does well, it's not. It's not unnecessary padding. It's, um, you can't judge it off the anime. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's based off that. Yeah, <laughs> so but a lot of people, they, yeah, but a lot of people who, you know, read the manga first, they say you could tell that the dude was added extra padding because, you know, okay. make deadlines and shit. Okay. Try to get, 
have a story, but you can tell sometimes you add too much shit to a story, mm. it collapses because okay. you got to be more, what's the word, like, you got to be flowing with your story in manga because you know, people read like that. Mm-hmm. You, unless, unless it's like a um, long tell, like a long epic, mm-hmm. like Berserk, you don't, you don't need a padding like that for like a Walmart, Walmart's comedy, I mean Walmart's comedy anime. So I'm, if I could get this bottom a grade, I'll give it a C. Yeah, the yeah. art is beautiful. It's yes, funny as fuck. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot of bullshit padding mm. that make this story go slow as fuck. Okay. I want to give a shout out to uh, this comic card, Spider-Man, Back in Black. Spider-Man, Black, Back in Black? Yeah. Spider-Man? Yeah. Okay. So Spider-Man, Back in Black, it takes place right after the Civil War, where you know, we know Spider-Man is Peter Parker. He revealed himself to the world. So after the events of the war, someone shoots, someone shoots uh, I, I may. She lives, but she's in a coma, and she's actually dying. So Spider-Man, Peter Parker, he gets to go berserk. So he goes to a tower, and you see this uh, Spider-Man mm-hmm. that's like all oh, coma up. Inside the Spider-Man, it's actually some um, old black suit, the semi-suit. It's not actual, it's actual, yeah, the actual um, semi-suit is just, you know, a copy of the suit. Mm-hmm. So, this story shows how good people just tap into the dark side and just let the dark side just control, us, control them. Mm-hmm. So, Spider Man, you know, when he like, fight, fight bad guys, he's cracking jokes. Mm-hmm. He, ain't, he ain't cracking jokes. Mm-hmm. He's, cracking, he's cracking bones and enjoying it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, the scene where uh, he breaks into this, um, this underground gun dealership. Try to figure out where did the gun came from that killed not killed Ahmed, but uh, shot Ahmed. He sees this one guy, he beats a shot at him, gets the information, he gets, gets some information about the guns and shit. And after he beat the shit, then he actually takes his fingers and starts breaking his fingers one by one. Damn. Not, just, not getting information because, because, he just, because he just enjoys you know, torturing people. Mm-hmm. And there's another part where um, Spider Man kidnaps a cop, beat the shot at a cop, shoot the cop with his rib, and start like, beating the fuck out of the cop. <laughs> just, just so he could get the cop's card and, and tell everybody, no, get the heat off Spider Man. Mm-hmm. And there's another part in the, um, the uh, comic book where you see, uh, you find out that Kingpin was the one who ordered, ordered the hit on Ahmed. So Spider Man breaks, in breaks into the jail, reckless. Like, he's, he's not even worried, he's not even worried, he's too. He's just, he's just dressed as Peter Parker. So, Kingpin gets everybody to the main. What's the the, the common grounds where all, all the MSP at? Mm-hmm. On the name, on the name. You literally said it. Oh, the common grounds. Yeah, I, guess. I thought it was I thought it was a special name for it, like a unique name for it. A unique, yeah, um, no. yeah. So I'm going to go the common. So common. Some more like the exiles equipment and shit. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. So Kingpin gets everybody to the common grounds because Kingpin th- Kingpin thinks he's going to go up Spider-Man's ass. Man, Spider-Man, be, Spider-Man hum, like fucking humiliates Kingpin. Like he fucking like grab Kingpin, kick him in the knees, like snap his knees in half. He grabs his arms, like so snap his arms. And so, so being the shit out of Sp- Spider-Man, I mean, Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. And Peter Parker was like, hey, this ain't Spider-Man killing you. This is Peter Parker. You fucked up by uh, shooting my aunt. So he grabs, he grabs Kingpin, put his mouth to his Put his hand to his mouth into uh, keeping this. Guess what? In three seconds, I'm going to uh, shoot a whole bunch of rib into your lungs. I'm going to watch you suffocate to death. Damn. Do you got these comics? No, it was, it was online. Like, it was online. Uh, yeah. I, well, I, 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 I want a physical copy of it. Like, oh, it's yeah. fucking amazing. That's good. So, Spider-Man, like, three, two, one. You see Kingpin crying. Mm. It's like psycho explaining. He flicks Kingpin with his um, middle finger. Mm. And Kingpin, like, flies across the... Um, Jail area, and so I was to, use it to say this: If Ahmed does die, I'm gonna torture you again before I actually want to kill you by putting my whip down your throat. And I'm gonna watch you suffocate. But Ahmed fortunately doesn't die. Spider Man realizes he fucked up, and Spider Man realizes he also may or may not committed some serious felonies that may get him locked up for 90 years. Mm-hmm. And also, he teams up with uh, Sandman in this comic. Are oh, you read the whole thing? Yeah. Oh damn, that's what's up. I give it an A. 
Because I just love how inspiring because Tappy is dark side is meant mm-hmm. berserk. Mm-hmm. And one more thing I want to shout out is um, Dark Side of the Ring, the new, the new Jack documentary. Yeah, the new Jack documentary. Mm-hmm. New Jack, the wrestler. Oh, New Jack. Yeah, for the guys who don't know, New Jack was, well, he's, I don't want to say, he's still his wrestling. He is a legendary horror wrestler who's. What's oh, the name of the documentary? Oh, Dark Side of the Ring, New Jack. Dark Side of the Ring? Yeah. New oh, Jack. that's a Vice TV show. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. So for those who don't know, New Jack, yeah, back you, in the 90s. Because the first episode was... Um, the Chris Benoit one? Yeah. Yeah. You, you seen him on the... Uh, <laughs> 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 you saw the um, the picture they have on the internet where they say Chris Benoit was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that... Oh, you talking about what he watched uh, the Thunder Dome match? Yeah. <laughs> I like, ain't fucked up for that, man. You saw that somebody put a uh, beheaded video on her too. Oh. <laughs> they didn't catch it. Like the end of the um, the end of the, the end of the episode. <laughs> like people was like posting some reckless shit on the uh, thumbnail screens. Like motherfuckers in that screen that shit. <sighs> so you, shit. so that concept just got killed. Like Chris Rock kids and his uh, wife. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but what's up with this dark side of the ring? Uh, but yeah, yeah, episode one was good though. Yeah, so Jack is saying like, it says new Jack talk about. Where you watch this at? YouTube. Okay. Yeah, so it's on. Uh, he's talking about his career mm-hmm. and why he's so fucking crazy. So I, I got a few points. So, so it's pretty much the story of New Jack is um rise to wrestling fame as a hardcore violent wrestler, and his gimmick is like you no know, a gangster who's conscious about you know white, uh, white supremacy. Mm-hmm. So. No, New Jack being crazy as he is, that shit crazy. You, people couldn't tell he was being serious or being real by his uh, anti-right views. So this, there was a one thing he did. At, uh, fuck. There's one Deep South wrestling group. Smoky Valley Wrestling were after OJ got it was like after OJ got uh, charged, got, like, charged by the, got charged for the mur- murders of uh, the Cole system. So OJ, not OJ, New Jack was like, thank you, OJ. Thank you so much. That's two less fucking crackers we gotta worry about. <laughs> <laughs> and all the white people in the fucking audience was like, you fucking nigger. <laughs> and people were throwing shit at him. <laughs> so the police actually had to escort New Jack and his um, taxi partner, Muf- Mufasa, out of, the, out, out of the actual state of Georgia. Mm. Because people that pissed off that they were actually gonna go, go out and kill New Jack. And the next week after that, New Jack really act the whole Rodney King beating thing, mm. but he got all the black wrestlers from the um, ring. They jumped a white boy, and they got all they got some more black wrestlers just as cops. So in there, so being the shit out of his wife, I say, "Fuck you, white, white, fuck you, white, fuck white people, Damn. fuck white supremacy." This on, this on WWE? WWE? No, it was the oh, it was all um, smoking body wrestling. Okay, like. Again, people did not know if he was being serious or if it was actually what he felt about like the whole Wadi King mm-hmm. and the the uh, OJ Simpson case. Mm-hmm. But he actually does say, you know, I actually that how I actually feel about it. Mm-hmm. He was like, I, cause like I don't play. He was like, I don't play. Why call me nigger? Mm-hmm. He's like, he called me a nigger. I don't give a fuck. You a wrestler or a fan? I will fucking kill you. Mm-hmm. So this also comes with a theory about how New Jack was not in the WWF. Cause there's there's a lot of rumors I think that it's true that um the WWF WWE is for the sort of white supreme um, white su- yes white supremacists heck yeah and if somebody would call New Jack a nigger that stage he he would probably kill half the stage I mean half the um half the locker room so I honestly think, I honestly I honestly think they did not want him there because no he was an Apple black man. Mm-hmm. He wants to. He wants one of these goofy wrestlers who got into wrestling. You no. Know. Oh, thanks for the job. Thank yeah. you. No, no, no. Like he just like he had a passion for wrestling, but he was not an ass kisser. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! And, uh, he also talked about you no know, the mass transit incident. So the mass transit incident was a little wrestling incident back in 1996 of November, where this kid, his gimmick was this fat white boy bus driver. He lied about his age. He said he was turning one, but he was actually 16. So he somehow got a tryout match with New Jack. 
So being the cocky little white kid like he was, mm-hmm. he was trying to tell New Jack what to do as a wrestler. And New Jack looked at the kid like, what the fuck you trying to tell me what to do? Mm-hmm. So during the match, there was supposed to be a spot where um, New Jack was to cut the little kid up, you know, no, in wrestling, you know, to make yourself bleed, they um, give you like a razor until you like cut through your forehead or like give like a, those um, movie style blood packs, mm-hmm. like give like some blood. Mm-hmm. So New Jack, for his boot, pulls out this big ass surgical knife. Mm-hmm. So he cuts the kid head across the forehead. He didn't bleed. So he's like, fuck. He digs in the kid's head and like slices his whole head off. Like, Ooh. I mean, not his head off, but like slices the whole oh, forehead off. Damn, nigga. And he actually killed a nerve in the Damn. kid's head. Damn. And he told the kid, I don't give a fuck. I, you die. Mm. So, he, so Jesus, he, is this yeah. he go to jail? No. He wow. almost did, though. Actually, he actually did with the jail in a wrestling match. So, um, back in 2004, No Jack was wrestling this one guy. I forgot his guy's name. So, as he's wrestling with the dude, somebody calls him, uh, again, a nigger in the stage. I mean, in the audience. So New Jack pulls off a knife and stabs the guy 16 times, I mean, not 16 times, nine times. Mm-hmm. And during the match, somebody in the audience, some white boy called the cops saying, it's a big black man stabbed me a little white boy to death. Mm-hmm. So you see these cops, they storm the arena. Not arena, but they storm the um, match, not the match, the um, ring. And New Jack was talking about was saying, sorry, how one of the cops grabbed him. So why are you, why you hate white people so much? Mm-hmm. Are you all uh, black supremacists? Mm-hmm. And New Jack, no, he snapped because no. Again, he does not play the whole racism shit. So after the match, after he got arrested, the fucking white boy had the nerve to say, hey, I will drop the charge on you if you turn this like a storyline. So New Jack told the dude, yeah, let's turn this to a storyline. So New Jack was able to um, get out of jail. He grabbed all his stuff and left Florida and move somewhere else because he didn't want to deal with that white boy again. Mm-hmm. That's no, I think that's it. I might have something going. Okay, um, yeah, so at the end of the uh, documentary, Chris Jericho, n- the narrator of the documentary, Chris told, Jericho? Yeah, okay. yeah, he, yeah, Chris Jericho is the guy who uh, actually made the Dark Side of the Ring uh, documentaries. Okay. He asked New Jack, hey, if they make a story of you, what should be the ending? And New Jack saw cracking. He said, okay, this is what the ending to be. Um, 80 years old, in a wheelchair, there's a pile of cocaine in front of me. I am snorting the cocaine, and as I'm high as fuck, I just get everybody the middle finger and say, ha, 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 fuck you, bitches. And the top screen says, the end. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a little troll, like a little troll gesture. Mm-hmm. And that's it. All right, it's on me. All right. The first thing I watched was the t- tax collector. What is a tax collector? I'm starting something new. I'm gonna start pulling up the actual name, like the description of the episode, because I, I don't be doing very well. Well, a description on Google says two enforcers for a crime lord faces uncertain future when an old rivals reappear. This movie was pretty good. I like it. Um, I guess I'll start off with giving it um, B plus. Um, B. Yeah. Um, it was all right. I mean, how long is the movie? Uh, I don't know if they tell you. It's, hour, it's like a ninety minute movie. Hour and thirty five. Um, take off fifteen minutes, so probably an hour and twenty. It was all right movie. Um, Shia LaBeouf is in it. He um um he look, he's a badass in it. Um, the the it's a it's a it's a Latino based movie. It's nothing but like like Latinos in the whole movie. Um, George Lopez is really good in it. Like oh, shit, um, uh, they do them. They yeah, uh, semi spoiler. They kill fucking him off, and uh, that really pushes the movie. Um, it's violent as fuck. They kill motherfuckers. Um, and the dude they going up against, he's using like uh, witchcraft. Like he's spraying. He's like doing. Um, the the day of the dead the Santeria stuff like praying to the, the death guys to protect himself from um like being killed by his enemies and, and that shit actually work and like uh it's not magic nothing like that he's just you know praying he do he mean come on man it's a fucking action movie uh it's not even an act you know, it's sort of it, what, what, what they, they call it they call it a 
crime thriller. That's what it mm-hmm. is. It's a crime thriller. Um, but um, it get, it gets good. Um, his dad is basically locked up. The two main character, uh, the main character, um, uh, played by Bobby Soto. His name is David Kurez. Um, Charlie Buff character is Creeper. Uh, his his he was his character is really good because he's just um he's really a psychopath. He'll like fucking cut your skin off and some shit. Like he catch you and do it. Um. But yeah, his dad tell him like, um, like you gonna have to go through some sacrifices if you like want to be on the top. And he like, man, I don't want to be at the top. I'm trying to get out of this shit, you know, type stuff. And some old rivals pop back up, like the thing just said, and basically start like killing like his friends and all that. She's like, what the fuck is going on? And like, dude is not being stopped. It's I don't want to spoil because it, it is a really it is a really good movie. But the shit spirals out of control and more people start dying and. Shit, he has to turn to niggas for help. And that's actually the really fucking cool. Like, near the end, he like, shit, I can't turn to Latinos no more. I'm about to go to black folks. And he going there, like, who the fuck this dude is, man? And he like, man, do this dude family, man, type shit. And he worked together with the black people, and they go hard, nigga. I'm like, see, you need niggas. My mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you need us. Um, but um, well, really, what we're, the reason really why I want to check this movie out because it's made by David Ayer, and David Ayer he um, did Training Day, uh, so it's just an amazing um, movie. But yeah, it's a good movie. Um, I really do like um, the the Tax Collector, um, but it's not really much I can really say about it. It's just they they rivaling, but they fucking each other up in this movie, like. That's one thing I will give it props to, like the whoever did the what do you call it, the makeup and all that yeah. stuff. Whoever does the the stuff, oh my god, it's a scene where they take a character and they drag his face across the concrete when they're driving and they pull him back up and it looks so good. Like it's gross, but <laughs> it looks so good. Like I, I'm, I'm I was looking up looking up to my uh, to my wife and I was like. Damn, this is actually good ass thing. And there's another scene where someone get like shot in the head. Every all that shit looks really good. Like I get whoever did props. I didn't actually need to find out who did the makeup and this shit because they need a shout out because they did a great job. They did. Um, but I mean everything else like, it'd be in spoiler territory, so I don't want to spoil it. I do recommend checking it out, even though I gave it a B. Uh, plus, <laughs> it's still good. It's not like it's not A level. Come on, man. Can't everything be A's now? Um, nah. But yeah, that's the tax collector. You want to check it out? Um, but Shia LaBeouf, he's really good in it. Um, they got a lot of cute Latinos in this motherfucker too. I was like, damn, they got yeah. Uh, what's her name? Chelsea Rendon. She's really cute. Um, Let's see a picture, see a picture of her. She a little cute little girl, boy. I need to follow her on some shit. She's super cute. She uh, I know, she on oh, TV she's show. She's cute as fuck. Um, she's kind of thick. From, yeah, she's thick too. Yeah, she's thick. She's thick. Um, but yeah, she she was in TV show V that I watched. Um, she was pretty good. But yeah, yeah. But the next thing I watched was I went for this movie for a little minute. I heard about it, Baby Splitters. What the fuck? <laughs> what, well, I mean, I was talking about you know finding Nazi zombie kids. I killed, so I can't talk shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fight him with my pack. The Google description says: Two couples who are ambivalent about having children decide to share one baby. It seems like a perfect compromise until things spiral out of control. I usually don't do rom coms or nothing like that, but I got my boy uh, <laughs> Danny Pundi in it, and he's fucking great. I like Abed from Community. It's the only he is he is the main character of this fucking movie, but uh, this is a really really good movie. Uh, even though I don't do the rom com thing, yeah. but I liked it. It was pretty fucking funny, uh, and I, I saw the trailer, and I thought the trailer was like, huh, that's interesting. Um, like these two couples want to share a kid. Cause, like, like the main character, I bet he don't want kids. He hate kids. Like the, I love how the movie starts off. It starts off with them fucking, and she's like, "Oh man, just fuck it. Don't don't put a condom on, man. Just uh, stick it in me raw." <laughs> <laughs> Talking just like that. I'm like, "Oh shit." <laughs> He's like, uh, you sure, man? I don't want to get you pregnant. She's like, uh, man, come on, man. I'm 35. You know, I, I really do want a kid. And then they start getting into the debate about having kids or not like that. He's like, well, I know you can't, you can't get pregnant off pre crumbs, so it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and then she got pregnant. Yeah, he's sticking in and all that. Um, they have sex and shit. And she like, um, but, and like having sex. 
and he's like, uh, tell me, tell me about when you about to, um, come, and I, I'm going to pull out. She's like, okay, and they having sex, and she's like, um, right in the middle of it, just come inside me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, wait, whoa, what? He's like, yo, no. <laughs> I told you I ain't really have kids. Like, my, my job is not straight, blah, blah, blah. When his job is straight, you get paid good, but he just works a lot. Um, so they go, and then then the next night they chilling with their family and stuff. Uh, family they chilling with their two friends, another couple. Um, and they talk about like having kids and shit too. And like the two women, like they want to have kids, but the, and the uh, the other couples, the other man, he do like the the bodybuilder do because he like does like uh. Jim, he like trains people. I'm gonna call him the trainer. <laughs> <laughs> the trainer and the trainer's wife. Uh, they were um, talking about it, and they both like, yeah, man. You know, it'd be cool if like you, like uh, the main character Abed and his girl, like if you just have the baby, because since you want to go through it, because the other girl, she's like, I don't, I want the baby, but I don't want to get pregnant and fuck my body up. But how how we fuck your body up? <laughs> uh, they very, uh, it's a very good conversation, like having kids and shit like that. And then it's a scene uh, when they go see another couple that they know they have kids now. Just you know, just see how it is with kids and shit, and it's like one of the kids' birthdays, and these kids are acting a damn fool, digger. Like he come over there, the main character, I bet he starts. Uh, the kids start like just attacking him for no reason with water bottles and water water bottles, uh, water guns and water balloons and shit. He's like, what the fuck? I need to do something. Like he, because just previously seen, he was talking about how he got these expensive jeans and he love them all that shit, and these kids just fucking him up. And he's like, man, fuck this, man. He gets inside. He they start having like. A dinner date during mm-hmm. her birthday, <laughs> uh, and they start talking and stuff. And the kids aren't ain't regulated at all; like they running around fucking up shit. And he's just looking like, "You ain't gonna stop these kids?" Like, no, we we believe that they should do whatever they want through the house. They are their free people; they're free. Blah blah blah. He's like, man, fuck this shit. How the kids turn the whole place up? Um, and he see one of the kids pissing in the sink on the dishes. <laughs> he's like, "What the fuck?" He looking. He looking at the kids. Like um, and the wife go in there and pull him off, um, pick the kid up and put him on the ground like don't do that. And no, she didn't even say do that. She's like, oh, you're just a little explorer, blah blah blah. Some shit. He's like, what the fuck? And she takes the dishes, rinses them off. Don't don't even put soap on them. Rinses them off and then serves their food on it. What nigga? He looked like so he- she's trying to be slick. Like trying, and he's peeping, like keep peeking in the corner, and like in the kitchen, like this bitch just rinse off the piss. Like what the fuck? Not even and put food on her. He he telling his wife like, nah, man, don't don't eat that shit. She eating in that shit. Hmm, tastes a little salty. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> he ain't eating a, anything. <laughs> he like man, fuck this shit. And then the little kids they standing in the kitchen like for the fuck you up at the kitchen. They about to throw some like some type of like paint or something. He like, man, don't do that shit. Don't do that shit. And they throw it at him. They hit him. And uh, and he's like, man, you gonna discipline kids? He's like, he's just like, no, like. Um, um, they they didn't know what they're doing. They do this little kids. He's like, well, let me, I'm sorry, I gotta do this. What you did was a bad thing. Don't don't ever do no shit like that. He like talking <laughs> reckless to the kid. Like, like I'm sorry, and they leave and shit. And um, the wife she get a message from her doctor telling her that uh she can't have kids because uh something about her eggs or some shit. And the dude he can't her eggs fucked up. Yeah, some shit. And the dude, his sperms are a little too low, uh Abe character. And they find out about the same thing. But the other couple, like, um no, Abe character, his sperms is too low. No, the no, no, his sperm is good, but her eggs is bad. And the opposite kind of couple his sperm is bad, but her uh, eggs are good. Some shit, uh, vice versa, whatever. So they decide to have the the couple's friend, the the trainer, have sex with his wife so they, they can get pregnant, so they can have the baby and shit. Because eventually they get convinced, like you know, we're gonna try to do it because the wife really wanted to. I bet it's girlfriend, wife, whatever, really wanted a kid, so he wanted to do it for. Her. So it was like a funny scene, like, okay, well, we all got to be in the room when y'all have sex. Because, <laughs> like, they break, they go to a doctor and try to do the, like, in vitro, all the little sciencey shit. But they like, yeah, that costs, like, 40 grand. And at your age, you got to do it about seven times, and then you'll be sick. <laughs> You're like, damn, 40 grand a piece? Like, shit, what about the other way? And like, yeah, that's the cheaper. That's $8,000 um, a piece, but it take about nine times for you. Like, <laughs> 
Like, man, what the fuck, man? We don't got time to spend all that money, you know, for a chance of getting pregnant. We'll just do the old school way. Because so there's nothing her and pray for the best. Right. So um, they have sex and shit. And, like, I've been kept to, like, um, he can't he can't do it. He can't hear it. He don't want to, like, even see his girl get fucked by another dude. But, the way, but his <laughs> wife, the trainer dude wife, she watching, like, she want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every, everything's clinical. They haven't said like, everything's clinical, hon. Everything's still good. <laughs> like she, I'm not cooking you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. She actually enjoying it. <laughs> no, she did. It was weird. It was weird to all for all of them. All of them was weirded out. He and I'll be care just eventually start getting um getting drunk, and the uh, the trainer's wife they start getting drunk just. Like uh, it's like literally, nigga. It's three hours, nigga. They fucking like they should have can't the clock go another hour. Like yeah, I just can't. I can't. I can't bust like this. Like can I? Is, is do I have your permission to put your wife in doggy style for a second? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you know, you start doing a doggy style. It's like it still ain't working. Can your wife talk dirty to me? <laughs> 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 he's like, he's like, just, just say I got tiny arms because he used to be like a scrawny kid, yeah. but now he's a trainer. He like got muscles and shit. So just tell me I got tiny arms. You tiny arm, little fuck. Yeah, go ahead, get some. You tiny arm, you little shit. <laughs> and eventually, uh, uh, he busts all in his wife, <laughs> um, and she gets pregnant. And it's like, great. And they start buying all the baby shit. But they're like, hey, we, we splitting the money. We ain't for the buy. You know, uh, car seats and all that shit cost like thousands of dollars. You want the good shit. Mm. So um, they spit all the money and all this shit. And then they go back to a doctor. And like, oh, shit. Like, what? Uh, you having twins? Like, shit. Because they, they both did. Because they already had plans. Like, you get the kid one week. We get the kid one week. They only wanted one kid. Mm. Now they got two. Like, well, now you have going to have another kid. Um, and they start, you know, having conversations, talking and shit. And um, they say, and then as all movies, if they, it's an argument that happens that makes them like, man, we don't even have these kids. They start arguing. And like the trainer's wife, she started getting like sick. She started blowing up and shit. You find out she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so on they got pregnant. Uh, so, but then when she goes to the doctor, she about to have triplets. God so damn. now... And then we find out, because he, he's like, how, how can you have a big pregnant? I can't eat. Like, we haven't had sex since old girl got pregnant. It's been three months. It's been like three months type shit. So how are you even pregnant? He's like, I got to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I had sex with the uh, Abed character because we were so jealous of y'all two having sex. So we decided uh, to have sex. But he's like, no, it can't be possible. I, I, I wore condoms. Like, there's no way you can get uh, pregnant, um, too. And his wife, like, uh, I've been wife, like, I gotta tell you a secret. <laughs> I've been poking holes in condoms for the past couple. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> what the fuck? Um, I'm gonna stop right there because this is more twist. Like, what the fuck, man? Within the movie, but um, it was a really good movie. I'm gonna give it a B plus as well. B plus. Um, it, no, actually, I'm gonna give it an A minus. No, uh, I'll give it an A minus. I get eight minus. It actually was pretty good. Like in the movie, and I'm like, this actually was a pretty good movie. It wasn't like a, uh, one of those romantic comedies. It do do cliche. Well, you know, I'm gonna give it a B plus. You know, I'm gonna take it back. It's a B plus because it does do cliche shit like the, you know, as all romantic comedies, they got to get into an argument, and it breaks them up, then at the end they get back together. They ain't have to do that, but I understand that's the beats of a rom com. But um, it was a really good um movie. I, I I give it highly recommend watching it. It's two hours, um, and you felt it. <laughs> Not saying it's bad, like two hours, like you like oh shit, shit. like giving you everything in this motherfucker, in the whole relationship. Um, the next thing I watched, um, well, final thing I watched was Dorada. Hey. Final arc. It's called Kentsu. Um, Yuki has not watched it yet, so I won't give up too much. But I'll talk about the first episode. Like it kills the whole, it kills like everything. Um, well, I'm gonna go back real quick because um, I did finish up the second arc, um, ten because mm-hmm. uh, Yugi was bringing up um, the whole Izai and over but the bag over his head. Shit, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and found out I was like two episodes from it. <laughs> I was like, oh well, shit, I, could, I probably just would have kept watching. But um, man. Okay, I say how the first arc is about new niggas in the hood. Mm-hmm. The second arc is the hood keeps moving even your even if your ass is, you know, down on the hood. 
<laughs> not, I mean, not nah, no, but like, and if, even if you don't want to be involved in hood shit, the hood yeah. keeps gonna keep moving, and that's true always to the end of the second arc when they mostly knock out mo- most of the main character, like most of like the threats within the hood. Like, mo- like I'm telling you, like when you finish that second arc, I'm like, damn, they took out all the top niggas in the hood. Like the hood is defenseless right now. So anybody can, anybody, everybody, nigga, everybody wild in the final arc, nigga, everybody wild. Even characters from fucking season one of The Ride Life, like, what the fuck? <laughs> How the fuck you come back? Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, they, that Zaya shit over the bag of his head was fucking great. Because it was all, um, all these, it's like with two gangs, um, MSB and uh, Saint something. Uh, these, basically high, some high schoolers, um, who was in a gang who like sells drugs, and then it was another uh, gang who they do illegal gambling, and it was all a play for you, uh, Isaiah to get the uh, yakuza off him. He did some fuck shit in that um, beginning of the second arc, like um, having um, Akane attack Shizuo and then basically pants might get her kidnapped. You, he fucking with the yakuza. He, Pretty much. He, like, he, he's he, not. He, he, he and Isaiah ain't no superhuman nothing. He's just a guy. Uh, he because what are you? Smart. Yes, he he's very yeah smart with it. Akane, um, and he had to plot some shit to get him out of that shit, and he put it all on these motherfuckers. Because um, you say that's all why he did it, right? Yeah, he did it for uh, Shinro because back in the day, Shinro got stabbed as a kid because Isaiah made a gambling ring and one of the founders of the gambling ring um, got <laughs> <Lost>. in debt <laughs> with the, the his, baseball. With the, how how do you get in debt of a gang you created? <laughs> You hear that shit? That's some <laughs> ultimate troll shit. <laughs> Isaiah was a beast even as a kid. Like, how you fucking in debt of something you created? <laughs> <Are> you crazy? <laughs> like, man, I can't pay you yet. He's like, well, you played the game. <laughs> she was Isaiah about to smack his ass with a fucking chair. <laughs> but uh, she jumps in and takes the, the stab. Um, but it makes Isaiah like, oh, this dude actually really likes me. He is my... For real friend, even though um, I played beginning. him a lot. Yeah, even though in the uh, beginning of this arc when he got stabbed, his children were like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> like, oh, someone stabbed you. Okay, well, I'm busy. <laughs> um, but um, he did it all for just Shinra, man, just to have him out. I'm like, this nigga had a 10 year long fucking game plan to fuck someone life over forever. Um, and actually, that's actually a cool name. Whoever, um, I, I need to use it for some Nakura. Cause that's a cool name. Cause uh, that was his troll name for, uh, <laughs> on the internet and everything. He used that name for di- he wrote that nigga name in dirt, nigga. <laughs> so, oh yeah, another thing. You almost got killed by that Yakuza. Oh, another thing. He was running the gang with drugs and shit. He's like, what? <laughs> Why do you do this to me? I'm like, oh, you know, I just you know, <laughs> <it's boring>. I was <laughs> bored. <laughs> you destroyed my life. I know. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Don't fuck with my friends, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> my one friend I have. Um, that was a great episode, but I ain't gonna see it anymore because there's a bunch of foul shit that happens in the hood uh, in the second arc. But um, let me talk about Ketsu. Ketsu is about um, knowing who you are. Um, that's what the final theme arc that I think what the final arc of Ketsu is is a knowing who you are. A lot of people just gets to the realization: oh, this who is I? Who this is who I am? And I need to understand like I ain't I can't that and just embrace that shit and that's what this literally what this final arc is all about every character realize who they truly are and they accept it and you sort of end the show like that you get now you know, man, Caesar. but um i'm gonna talk about the first episode though the first episode starts off with an unlikely gang of people selty um it's selty shinra walker um, dude who drives the car. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> Celtic always says that too. Like the, the, the dudes that drive the car. <laughs> uh, the dude who drives the car. Um, Seiji. You, know, you never know Seiji. Seiji and Seiji. You know the clingy girl who will be on Seiji with the fake Celtic head because they she got plastic surgery to make herself look like Celtic's head mm-hmm. to get Seiji to like her and Seiji's sister. You know who's obsessed with her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and. Um, that's it. And they all band together to help Selty out because Selty really, truly need help because the head appears. Um, and also within the episode, let me go. I'm going back to the 10 arc. At the end of the episode, when um, he fucks the dude life over, Anakura, mm-hmm. um, we end, they end it with Isaiah making his own gang. He got 
um, the girl, the crazy girl who's stalker of that teacher. It's like uh, he got a couple biker gang dudes, uh, the uh, something zombies. Um, dragon, dragon zombies. Uh, yeah, dragon zombies. He got ex Yakuza dude. He has a, a very good martial artist girl who's like a tomboyish. Um, she and Daddy always call oh, you the tomboyish um, martial artist girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else is in the gang? Um, who else was in the gang? Who else was in the gang? Somebody else, too. Oh, and the girl who tried to kill him. <laughs> the girl with the glasses. She uh, is part of the gang um, as well. He's like, yeah. Welcome to my welcome to the dollars, everybody. Now we can have some hot pot. <laughs> Cause you remember, you remember he had no friends. He had no friends. Well, how about some shabu shabu, everybody? God, <laughs> you know, yeah. The episode just ends. I'm like, he, he gangster for that. Like, I'm gonna give me some fucking friends, nigga. Oh, don't give me some hot pot. This nigga had fucking the weirdest eclectic of friends, nigga. <laughs> um, but yeah, bring it but back to that, um, back to Kinsu though. But yeah, that's but now he got a gang, and now Celtic got a gang. Like this is a we gonna we gonna call this a guild. A guild. Um, that's Walker, his nerdy anime ass. <laughs> this is our guild. I thought and, I thought we sus could know she's Irish as fuck. <laughs> no, nah, it's like this is our guild. Just, she didn't even want this shit. She's like, why are everybody doing her? She just came home and she see everybody in the house. She's like, what the fuck? Because that's actually how the last arc end. It's with Celtic walking the house. Like, why is Sagey here? Why is Walker here? Like, why is the dude who drives here? Like, like hey Celtic, welcome home. I'm like, I'm like, hey, like these are weird eclectic of friends are gonna be uh who basically ride gonna be ride and die for um Celty. But it's funny because we never see all these characters interacting, so it's the funniest shit. Because uh, uh Shimmer and Daddy pop up, you know the weirdo with the mask and yeah. shit. And um you remember uh, Sage's sister works for uh, Isaiah, so she heard every ear, she ear hustling, heard everything Isaiah. You know, Isaiah be rambling about shit, so she knows she basically knows everything Isaiah is up to, and she like talking shit the whole time, like. Like, why are you even in love with Shinra? This dude, the reason why your old head got cut off. Like, and he knew where your <laughs> head was at. Like, <laughs> like, um, because Shinra Daddy was there. It's like, and then Shinra Daddy didn't even know where the head is. So why are you fucking with these people? She's like, I don't give a shit about none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she just was like pissed because she like, um, she just don't like, I don't know, she just, just all she wanted to say to you. She didn't want to really beat her, but say to her. Um, but, um, what else? And then uh, Shinra and Daddy start uh, talking to uh, Shinra like, "Oh damn, Selty! Like you're such a badass in the street, but you look look kitty cat in um in the house, huh? Cause she like being some misses for Shinra and stuff and all that shit. She's like, "Let me guess, y'all y'all having sex yet?" She's like, "Yeah, we had Shinra. Like, yeah, we having sex. Yeah, she's real little cat in the bed. I be when we be doing one this one position, she grabs his mouth up. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn." Such like, a freak. <laughs> See, he, he busted it open. Okay, go ahead. Tear them walls up, nigga. Shinra. Shinra getting laid. Nigga, he a weirdo. He fucking a uh, doolahan, nigga. Look at, look at this bitch. <laughs> All right, he, he, getting, he getting hit from a headless bitch. He's like, hell yeah. That shit was fun. I was like, oh, that was bold. <laughs> like, them talking about selfie fucking. I was like, damn, selfie sex life. Because like, all you don't, you, don't, you don't ever think about it. Like, has he even fucked? Because she always playing funny style. Yeah. The fucking. Yeah, he fucking, nigga. <laughs> Shimmer fucking. He fucking that dude behind, nigga. That's why I ain't leaving the crib. He in love. He getting some pussy we ain't never felt, nigga. <laughs> Putting his dick in a dark boy. I was gonna say like, <laughs> oh, man, I just, I just, I just, I was off. I was um, black in their Facebook group. Um, so I was trying like, who we rat you had to get hair from? Celtic from Dorawa or Melina from um, Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how you gonna get hair for either one? One don't, <laughs> one don't have a head, and. Each time you your dick in the girl's mouth, mm-hmm. Melina's mouth, you don't, your dick will get shredded. Well, 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 I can say Celtic can make a, a smoky, you know, head. <laughs> she, could, she can make a helmet. She yeah. makes helmets out of the smoke and shit. Maybe she can make a fake head. You know, she, he, he ain't gonna get no like lubricant on it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how what smoke can do. <laughs> That'd be funny. Like, yeah, I'm feeling it all right. <laughs> Just smoke, nigga. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Oh, man, I want to talk about the ending of the fucking last arc because it's so dope, man. I can't because you ain't watched it. It's so good because his eye gets revenge back on Jengai Yuguri and <laughs> he killed him up. <laughs> his eye be killing niggas. I'm like, oh, shit. And it ended like that. And it ended with them with Celtic walking in the house and shit. But I was like, 
Oh man, like it's just that final arc is so good. Um, I guess we can talk about it hopefully next week. Yeah. Um, just well, yeah, that final. Just remember when you watch that final arc, it's about knowing who you are, man. It's really good. Um, but that's all I got. Right. I have nothing else. I have, and if this is your first time listening, <laughs> you know, we used to have segments. We talk about things, but uh, I don't have no news stories. I got no no news stories to me. And the obvious the obvious news story is no Ch- Ch- Chadwick's death. Yeah, Chadwick Boseman died. I guess yeah. we, I mean, we do have to put that in the description below. Come nah, on. it's like come on. Yeah, I know. And um, I I did have a topic was super heavy with everything going right now. Like you know, I probably don't want to go into heavy right mm-hmm. now because it's been kind of a depressing week for a lot of people. Yeah. So we'll we'll make next week even more star studded. Um, don't worry, we got y'all. Um, where can they find you? You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash you could the snowman. You can find me on my website at you could the snowman dot com. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube at you could the snowman three four. And finally, you can find me at retest yuki on Twitter. You want to find me? I'm TV Guru one hundred eight on YouTube. You want to find me on? On Twitter, I'm Super Lost Fan. <gasps> oh, Jesus. 108. We'll find any of our stuff. SwirlyNerd.com. SwirlyNerd on Twitter. Email us. We would like to talk to y'all. Um, ask us some questions. Um, you got to make sure, but let it be known. You ask us some questions. We're going to talk about it on here. We're going to um, quite, you know, talk about it on there. So send us some questions. Ask us about animes or movies or whatever you want to ask us about. Um, SwirlyNerd at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, SwarthyNerd.com. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're Swarthy Nerd on basically everything. Just type Swarthy Nerd on Google. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Instagram, Instagram, Jesus, uh, Google Play Podcast, um, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, um, basically everywhere. Man, like we don't shit. I didn't even know we was on. <laughs> like for <laughs> just type in Swarthy Nerd on Google, you'll see us. We everywhere. Uh, fuck with our Facebook page. We post uh, sometimes here and there. But we're just not social media people, man. We're not about that. Yeah. You know, what, what, what's our thoughts every day about some bullshit? Like, this is where you're going to get it from is the podcast. Like, we just mostly, like, retweet stuff or like stuff on our social platforms. We might occasionally fuck with the Facebook like that, but that's just not our drive, man. Our drive ain't fucking trying to, you know, shit. Y'all on the internet as well. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> you can see these stories and shit. You should explore yourself, research shit. Um so if we find some any anything remotely interesting, we'll put it on the Facebook page, like the thing I just posted today. Well, we have to now it's gonna be Saturday, but Saturday um, I posted up um, the Stingray uh, article from the Intercept when they talk about the Stingray and how uh, they could tap into people's phones by having like short wave, like it basically hack niggas' phones and may see everything you're doing. But um, fuck with us. We'll see you guys and gals next week. Later.